everybody back for part three are you surprised to see me well <clears throat> now we're going to go on to as i said what is the proper maintenance for your chain sword as you know that is an important piece of information for everybody to know let's get into it battle and maintenance despite their relative ease of manufacture Few weapons require as much maintenance as the Imperial Chainsword. Fortunately, the maintenance is of a mundane nature, easily performed by any ganger or warrior. Rather than something like plasma technology, which inevitably requires the sacred insight of a tech priest in order to keep it functioning over time. Replacement te uh, teeth tracks are found in vast crates alongside las gun power packs in every Imperial Guard drop zone, as well as being similarly stored aboard every Space Marine Thunderhawk gunship. The first concern is that even the most well-forged chainsword will blunt quickly against heavily armor armor heavy armor especially the dense ablative layers bolted onto an orcish warlord or the tainted ceramite of a traitor space marine chain swords lack the heavy cutting weight of chain axes and their bulkier ilk and are better served to cleaving through the joints of heavy suits of armor. Secondly, chain swords are thirsty weapons. Some variants are much more efficient in terms of fuel consumption, but those that aren't powered by self-sustaining energy generators drink Promethium fuel no differently to countless other low-tech Imperial machines and emit the same crude oily reek as any tank's engine. That's actually kind of interesting because if that's the case, it would be virtually impossible to use a chain sword indoors. You'd kill yourself. You'd die from carbon monoxide poisoning within minutes. You don't believe me? Somebody get a generator, bring it into your room, and turn it on. A generator, an actual gas power generator. Go ahead, bring it into a house, as small as you like, and turn it on, and sit in the room with it, and let me know how that goes for you. <coughs> or, or even better yet, hey, just get a chainsaw, and bring it inside the house, and start it, and put it on your table, and just sit next to it see how that goes because obviously you'd have to be holding it if it's a handheld weapon so just just uh, yeah chain swords can't be used indoors <clears throat> the final concern is one of skill chain swords can throw teeth when they're used in poorly executed parries slapped blade to blade with other chain weapons or simply wielded with all the precision of a club while teeth are easily replaced and repaired it is not uncommon for battles between chain sword duelists to end with both the victor and loser's blade missing several teeth especially if the fighters wore heavy armor orc weapons especially those with chain teeth made from the alien ivory of an orc's own sharpened fangs, are especially vulnerable to this type of degradation. Anyone with a modicum of experience wielding one of these weapons knows to parry with a reinforced flat of the blade rather than to catch a blow on the toothed moving edge actually there's yeah I'm, I'm gonna mention that later but 
centrifugal force should also play a major problem in trying to wield uh, uh, any type of chain weapon. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is if you want to try it, somebody get a bicycle tire, okay, hold both ends of it like this or something, and then spin it. And while you're doing it, try to move it back and forth you're going to see that it's going to like to stay straight. Well, a chain weapon spinning around really fast is the same deal. It's going to like to stay straight. So this whole parrying and twisting it from side to side in order to avoid the moving edge would actually be more difficult said than done. More easier said than done is what I'm trying to say. But never mind, let's go on. These issues of durability rarely apply off the battlefield. A hive ganger or sump waste outlaw can own a chain sword his entire life without suffering the same degenerative annoyances as an assault marine of the Adeptus Astartes. Because, like any weapon, a chain sword's use depends entirely on context. When used, as intended, against lightly armored foes, a chain sword's lethality is without question. No other blade in existence cuts flesh with the same vicious, ravening hunger as a chainsword. A fighter's strength will add to the blow's devastating effects, but where other melee weapons may rely purely on strength, a chainsword makes for a perfect dueling weapon. I beg to fucking differ with that. Just as, an, just as effective when wielded with grace and speed over brawn. Once the teeth even graze flesh, their motorized bite hooks deeper and saws through muscle, sinew, and bone with the same surgical ease. Just as nothing cuts meat and bone like a chainsword, nothing bleeds like a chainsword wound. Enemies losing arms and legs to these weapons, a practice commonly called limbing by Imperial Guards, veterans with unpleasant smiles, can look forward to one of the bloodiest battlefield deaths imaginable as their life pours out through the uncarterized, mangled stump of flesh that remains in place of a whole limb. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Next, there's a rules section, but I can safely say we all know the rules for a chain sword in 40k, I hope. <laughs> if not, go look them up. So anyways, next time... We're going to be doing all of the major weapons in 40k, of all the factions. We're going to be talking bolters next, and then who knows what. Until then, I know you're excited. Bye.